So my name is Megan Gasht and I work for Freedom From Hunger as a research and evaluation specialist. So Freedom From Hunger is a technical assistance organization. We're based in Northern California. So some of the big takeaways for how to better engage youth from emerging economies that I've um, taken from this Making Sense conference are, one has to do with um, workforce development and employment of youth, which I think is a really important issue. Because um, when you talk to youth in emerging economies, you ask them what they want and what they need. They want job training. They want skills training. They want to learn how to engage further in their economies. Um, another takeaway is um, in regards to savings. I think there was a lot of focus on financial services for youth over the past few years. And so now we're sort of asking ourselves, okay, we spent all this time working on these financial service, services projects, so what have we learned? What, what do we know? And it's, there's some, you know, it's, I mean, we learned youth can't save, which is nice to know, and savings is a good area of financial services to focus on with youth, especially younger youth. But I think there's still some mixed outcomes in terms of what's the best way to reach youth, what's the best way to make an argument for financial institutions to become involved in youth. I think there's still a lot more work to be done in that area. I think there's promising outcomes, but there's still more work to be done. Events like this, like Making Sense, um, they shape my thinking in the way that um, I'm able to get together with other practitioners and hear about what they're doing and learning and learn about best practices for instance like learning about what works and also what doesn't work is really important it's really helpful for practitioners to come together and sort of have an honest conversation about um, what were some of the challenges and how they overcame them but it's just really great to have this as a forum to even do that, as a space to do that. Uh, you know, practitioners are all over the globe, and so when you have a designated week one, uh, you know, at one point in the year, this is when you know you're gonna have people fly in from posts in Africa or Latin America, Asia, and come together and talk. And it's great to also do it through the workshops, through presentations, but then also through the networking too. At Freedom From Hunger, we try to incorporate a tool that we created several years ago. It's a Freedom From Hunger food security scale, and it was based on the USDA food security scale, but it was calibrated to an international context and tested in various um, countries. So we integrate that scale into almost all of our evaluation work. So we also try to integrate the Progress Out of Poverty Index, and so we get an idea of the the people that we're reaching, what's the poverty level of these um, participants as well as what the food security levels are. And what's most interesting that we've seen over and over again is that their poverty level and the food security um, outcomes don't necessarily correlate. Like you can have very poor people that are, well they're most likely food insecure, but you can also have people who are well above the poverty line who are also food insecure. And you see that in the United States as well, which is really interesting. So it just shows like how incredibly complex food security is. It's a really tricky issue. It's a very seasonal issue as well. Um, it's interesting too because when we use the food security scale, the question, um, all nine questions are based on a recall period of 12 months. So people are supposed to answer the questions based on you know, questions like, um, did you worry that you would have enough to eat? Um, it's supposed to be based on the last 12 months of their experience, but they usually just focus on the past month. So if you use the same scale in April, like, like during rainy season versus um, dry season or hungry season versus um, non-hungry season, you get completely different answers. So it's that even though the question is really about their experience from the last year, they really just focus on what's at hand in the moment. And I think that's fascinating because you can see, and you usually do see pretty wild fluctuations in food security with the rural poor mostly.